<coughs> Hello, good evening and welcome to my humble model railway, Bedstead Junction. Now tonight we're having a, going to look at uh, two locomotives and they're of from two different eras, both model wise and in, in uh, terms of the uh, in locomotives in service, let's say. Now the locomotive you can see going around the, the uh, track at the moment is a, a Hornby D single. It's Lorna Doom. Uh, named after the uh, famous book by uh, Blackmore, I believe, with the author. And Lorna Doom was a romantic novel set at the time of the uh, Monmouth Rebellion. And it actually made um, parts of the West Country famous um, in the areas around Porlock on, on Exmoor. Made a lot of Exmoor locations very, very famous. Uh, a ding single. Now, what is a single? It's um, a locomotive with one pair of driving wheels. Uh, that was a standard form for a pa express passenger locomotive in Victorian times. But you can think of other locomotives which had uh, single wheels, like the uh, Caledonian single. I think that's also offered by Hornby. And also the uh, Sterling single. I think that model is made by Rapido. Um, now, they were built um, originally as 222 locomotives and uh, the first eight of this class were built to be able to be converted from the uh, broad gauge to the standard gauge in fact all these uh, locomotives became uh, standard gauge when the broad gauge was um, abolished in 1892 now they were um, originally like I say a 222 locomotive they became a, a 422 um, for one reason and that's because they needed to actually lengthen the boilers of these and when they did that uh, they found that the um, longer boiler was problematic on the 222 wheel configuration and in fact one of these actually broke their axle in box tunnel that was uh, number 3021 uh, with more castle now from then on then it was decided to put um, to change these into a 422 locomotive. I think these were like what they call a suspension bogey on the front. So this is what they're like in, in their final um, form, which is the Achilles class. And I believe you can still get these, or they were certainly recently offered as part of the uh, Hornby Railroad range. Uh, this one's from about 2004, I think, for the uh, from Hornby. And it's um, a matter of fact, they were part of a limited run from Hornby. Now they were all uh, finally withdrawn between 1908 and 1915. Well, the last one, 1916, was withdrawn. And the reason being, there was nothing wrong with the locomotives as far as speed was concerned, but I think the, uh, as the demand of the railway became greater, certainly with later trains, it became necessary then to go for coupled locomotives rather than single wheelers. Now this class finally numbered 80 locomotives. None have survived into uh, preservation, but there is a working replica, uh, sorry, a non-working replica, which uh, won't go anywhere because I think only half the wheels are shown. Anyway, now, as far as notable um, members of this class, uh, number 3065 Duke of Connell uh, made a record-breaking um, run with the Ocean Mail in May 1904. Taking, taking over from the city of Toro at Bristol to Paddington and it did that journey in 99 minutes and 46 seconds and between the two locomotives they did the whole journey 
from Plymouth to Pony to only 227 minutes. That was a record-breaking run of the ocean mouth. So as late as 1904, these locomotives were still producing fantastic performances. Now, eventually, of course, these had to, these had to be withdrawn. And as a matter of fact, the, um, the successor of George Jackson Church Ward actually uh, invented the locomotive, designed the locomotive that took over these. I mean, William Dean was um, Chief Mechanical Engineer of the Great Western Railway between, uh, 19, between uh, 1870s and 1902. And then we're going back to see the work of George Jackson Church Ward who was Chief Mechanical Engineer from 1902 to 1922. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the model, shall we? Um, just for a little while, while it's going round. We talked about this one in, um, in service. If you're interested in getting one of these uh, locomotives, our 2614 GWR422 D-Class 331 Lawn of Doom 347 Limited Edition. Okay, so you can see that there. Limited Edition. Well, I can't really uh, let this, this video go by without me showing off the oh, Certificate of Authentication. There we are, Certificate of Authentication. Signed by Simon Kohler. One of 2,000 locomotives. And I've got the privilege of owning number 1725. Well, 1725 for run of 2,000. Now it's putting three Claressery coaches. Which are also designed by William Dean. So it is a quite a fitting train. It's got the right um, engine with the right rolling stock. Now this locomotive. Does not have traction tyres okay. So, it does need careful handling, it does need the, uh, the track to be in good condition, uh, no, no significant slopes, and also um, the wheels obviously need to be kept quite clean as well. But it's a very, very nice set of runner this lawn of doom, quite, quite pleased with it really. I mean really, it, it's, the, it's the grand finale of Victorian elegance, isn't it? I think one of these pulled uh, Queen Victoria's funeral train, the Royal Funeral Train as well. So they were still being used on prestige trains. It was only when the 440s came out, and eventually, of course, classes of uh, 460s as well, much more powerful, much more traction than the six driving wheels, that these were eventually superseded and withdrawn. Now these locomotives, um, certainly in a Hornby sense, owe their heritage right the way back to the uh, original one which they produced, which was called Lord of the Isles. Well, I do think, I, I do believe there is Lord of the Isles available at the moment as part of a train pack. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's a Victorian train pack. So I think there's interest in these models, even up to, until now. I see they were available as a railroad, uh, a railroad one as well. Now, the, the interesting, the railroad version did have traction tyres, whereas this one does not. Okay, and you you may find that with uh, a certain number of coaches, you're going to suffer from wheel slip, and I'm sure that was one of the reasons why these locomotives were eventually replaced. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to run this one into the station, and you'll see what she's like on points. Okay, we'll slow her right down. And the question we'll be asking is, will she be able to start start again without well, the wheel slipping? But we'll give that a try in just a second. You're going to need very, very careful handling with the controller. So let's uh, just give the points a quick change. And we'll uh, run her into the station. Now, even though this one has not got any pickups on the tender, it's got pickups on the front bogey and also on the driving wheel and also on the driving wheels as well. 
So let's watch her go in. There we are, she's pulling without slipping, lovely. Okay, that glided into the station quite elegantly, didn't it? Beautiful. And you can see behind her, the 440 City of Toro. Now, the, this uh, locomotive here is the work of William Dean. He took over from Armstrong. Um, the Great Western Railway uh, Chief Mechanical Engineers. Well, the first one was Brunel, but I think uh, his original designs were not too successful. Sorry to say that about the Great Brunel, but it's true. I think only one locomotive was... Um, actually really uh, any of any practical use um, it took the um, arrival of uh, Gooch who was the first uh, chief mechanical engineer really of the Great Western Railway so the actual um, dynasty runs from uh, Gooch Armstrong Dean Churchward um, Collett and then finally Hawksworth. You're talking about the span between two different um, locomotive engineers here. Now this is really the change really between the Victorian age, the single wheeler, and the um, Edwardian age. We began to see more and more coupled locomotives, certainly on the Great Western Railway. But I think it's a beautiful, a beautiful model. It's it's not this detailed. I mean, it's it's. Shows it's, uh, it certainly shows it's uh, Lord of the Isles origins, for the original Triang model from the 60s, in that it's got moulded handrails on here now. It does have a painted cab, a uh, decorated cab. doesn't possess sprung buffers or anything like that. But in my opinion, it's still a lovely model. Nice representation of the uh, copper chimney and of the brass uh, safety valve cover. Let's just zoom in a little, shall we? Beautiful. There we are. A really elegant... Lorna Doom. Right, so we're going to have a change of train now. I'll be moving on to Dean's successor, George Jackson Churchward. Now, Churchward um, began to standardise the Great Western Railway. Certainly had great um, benefits, the cost and everything else. But there were certain things which he uh, carried on with on the city class and we'll go into that in just a moment and we'll talk about the city class as well while we're going round right so let's take a look now now this model here is a much later model by Backman and yes it does contain an awful lot more separately fitted parts um, got a detailed cab it's quite a heavy locomotive as well quite heavy locomotive so let's watch it come out of the station now go and focus on the engine if we can and we'll see if we can get go and get underway right have i cocked something up with the uh with the points let's have a quick look it's all light stuff here you know i mean you'll, you'll see all my boo-boos as well as my successes let's take a look aha right Sackler Sigmund. At least I didn't cause a disaster. Right, here we go. You see this one pulls out. Now, this one's got outside frames. Inside cylinders. Very much. Uh, carrying on of older designs. And in fact, you'll see that also with the uh, Duke Dog class, which you can get a model of as well from from uh, Backman. Okay, so let's just change the points now. We'll take her around the track, and we'll see how she runs. It, these both these locomotives are very very nice little runners, in my opinion. And. Okay, I mean, I've heard comments being made about the quality of the mechanisms on a Backman locomotive. I've never had any trouble with them. They've always been okay for me. I, there we go. Round we go. So off we go. Now, this particular one, it's got an, what may seem to be an unusual name for a Great Western Railway locomotive. 
and it's called Killarney, one of the city class, one of a class of 20 locomotives designed by George Jackson Churchward. <coughs> the first one was uh, built was called City of Bath and that was built in 1903. And of course there is only one, uh, one preserved example of these, which is the, the famous city of Choro, part of the National Collection. I have been looking out for a model of the uh, city of Choro, but I'm afraid I've kind of backed off with the prices, I must admit. I mean, they, they want over £200 for, for a second-hand ones. I mean, that is, to me, more than I was willing to pay. Uh, this one I got for, uh, for a lower price than that, but obviously it's not the one of City of Choro. Um, but it's a very, very nice locomotive anyway. Okay, these are called the 3700 class. Now City of Choro uh, is reputed to be the first locomotive to break the 100 mile an hour barrier. It was um, unofficial though, and there were various reasons for that. Um, I mean, it was said that the Great Western Railway were reluctant to publicise it because they uh, were fighting the, well, they were worried about that they might scare the passengers. Whether or not that's true or not, I don't know. But that's a story that I've heard. Okay, but this one actually did go over 100 mile an hour, so it's pre um, actually reputed. Okay, now Killarney. Uh, why would it be called Killarney? Isn't Killarney in Ireland? And you've got ones like City of Choro in Cornwall, City of Bath in Somerset. I think there was a City of London, if I remember rightly, it could be. Okay. Well, it's because at the time that these locomotives were built, uh, this, the island of Ireland was all still uh, one uh, under the United Kingdom. Okay, so the Great Western Railway were able to offer services. Um, from Paddington to Killarney, and in fact they were um, actually uh, publicised, well publicised, they produced booklets all about it, okay, and um, but what they would do actually is that they would go, I think they would travel up to Ross Lair, the Great Western Railway, um, and then go across to Ireland, and then go down into, some, in, into what is now known today as the Republic of Ireland, okay. So, that's why it's called Killarney. Killarney was actually um, deemed to be served by the Great Western Railway. Beautiful locomotive. I mean, the 440, I mean, these, these smaller locomotives like the 440s, uh, they do have an advantage on a smaller layout because they're smaller locomotives. I mean, they, uh, uh, these um, more bigger locomotives, like the Flying Scotsman, when I've got the, um, I've got Tornado, and that's quite a large locomotive, obviously. That, I think that's a 462, isn't it? Anyway, but this uh, little 440, this, this with three coaches fits really, really well on my layout, in my opinion. Really, really nice models. Now, the Backman uh, one, this particular Backman locomotive, is a, is a later locomotive, so it does actually have the uh, tender pickups. Okay, there is electrical contact between the uh, between the tender and the uh, locomotive, but these Batman locomotives, in my opinion, got a terrible way of actually connecting the locomotive to the tender. And if you've not got if you've not got this uh, locomotive and tender correctly hooked together. You will find that you're putting the whole thing around on its wires, okay? Not nice, okay? So, if you buy one of these, make absolutely sure. I mean, what happens is the drawbar as it just goes over on a little peg on the tender, okay? Easy to miss and easy, to, easy for it to come off while you're putting the, the train onto the track. I've got this all nice and safely put together here. In my opinion, very, very nice runner, as you, as you say. Um, it's got the uh, the characteristics of a great Western locomotive, in that it's got the uh, 
the brass safety valve and copper cap chimney. And I think I think Batman could be a, a, actually a full different producer in this model. Uh, let's take a little look at what we've got here. So if you're looking at buying a Killarney, okay, it's 31728, City Class 3708, Killarney, in Jutabara Green. And you will see this is actually DCC ready as well, okay? So the DCC ready, my layout is DC. Um, for a simple reason, I mean, I don't think I would need DCC on a layout of this size. But would I want to run more than one locomotive on a little over like this? No. It might help with, with the sidings, with certain maneuver, uh, sidings maneuvers, but really for me, I mean, uh, you know, I, mean I, I know some of you might disagree, but I think at the moment, with the kind of layout I've got, the actual DC is uh, the way to go for me at the moment. Right, so what we're going to do then is we're going to watch Killarney come into the station now. Just a few moments. And you'll see what uh, she's actually like over points as well. So away she goes, up to, this, up to the signal box. Up to the signal. And this is why, in fact, this is called Bedstead Junction, this layout. Well, for obvious reasons, you can see the end of the bed there. Okay, so let's have a quick change of points so and we'll bring her back in. Okay, so bring over the points. There we go, over the points we go. Nice and easy does it. So this the that, that going over there, I was a little bit cautious going over the points there with this particular one because uh, it does need to be handled rather carefully. Let's take a little look at some features of this one. Right, it doesn't have spunk buffers, okay. Uh, neither does this one. But it's got a lot more separately fitted detail. I mean, whereas the, uh, the handrail on the, uh, on the Dean single it's part of the moulding and it's really just painted silver. On here, it's a separately fitted handrails and everything else. So, I mean, like I say, there's, there are two different eras. Not only of locomotive, but of... Um, in service, but also as models. Okay. Now, these were eventually withdrawn as well because they were an older design as well. Now, um, the reason being... Is that for one church ward ceased to be the uh, chief mechanical engineer in 1922, and then he, he was succeeded by Charles Benjamin Collett, who was actually then going to be producing a large number of uh, six wheel, six wheeled, um, coupled wheeled locomotives. I mean, it, it started with church ward, who came out with the Saint class and with the Star class, and then. Uh, with Charles Benjamin Collett, you would have seen uh, locomotives like the the Castles and the Kings. And for freight, you would have seen the Halls and the Granges and the Manors. So these sort of locomotives would have been replaced. I mean, they, they were a class of 20. I mean, probably there was a stopgap between the um, Edwardian age... And the Victorian age, the Edwardian age, and later. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed my little running session tonight. I mean, if you like what you see, uh, press the like button and subscribe. I hope it's been of interest for you. And uh, like I say I've just gone. I've, I've not long gone over three hundred subscribers. Um, I haven't felt like uh, making a video recent now. Uh, 
to follow on on my last one up until now, simply because really I've not been feeling very well. I mean, I won't go into it too, too much. Nothing serious. I've got knee troubles and uh, it's been quite painful. It's all clearing up now, so I'm okay. But uh, um, if you wanted to know why I've not produced any vi uh, any videos, and I'm sorry if I've missed anybody's videos and haven't commented or anything on them. Um, like I say, I've, I've not been a little bit under the weather, knee wise, that sort of thing, okay? But I say, again, thank you very, very much for watching. I say, if you like what you see, press the like button, subscribe, ring that bell, and I shall bid you farewell and good night.